Just on the John F. Kennedy. Well, my dad's a flat officer of the John F. Kennedy. What does your dad do in the Navy? My dad is the commander of the John F. Kennedy. From Hampton Roads to the Med, it's a Navy Christmas with your hosts, Joe Flanagan and John Wesley. It's a Navy Christmas is brought to you by Newport News Shipbuilding and Taco Bell. We at Newport News Shipbuilding are proud of our long association with the U.S. Navy. We have built more than 200 Navy ships, and Navy people have been a large part of our shipbuilders' lives for almost 100 years. During this, our centennial year, and especially during this holiday season, we are happy to co-sponsor this telecast. We send our deep appreciation to all Navy people and their families for the sacrifices they make for our country. Hello, I'm Lori Dewey, and I speak for everyone at Taco Bell when I tell you how proud we are to bring you this program, A Navy Christmas. This is a time of year to reflect upon the past 12 months and to set our sights on the future, a future that is so directly tied to you, the men, women, families, and friends of the United States Navy. We're grateful for the opportunity to extend our warmest of holiday wishes in a very special way. Thank you from Taco Bell. Merry Christmas, everyone, from Naples, Italy. I'm John Wessling. You know, the Mediterranean is a beautiful place to be lonely. The Norfolk-based aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy is anchored just over my shoulder. It's here in the Med that the Kennedy and the other members of its battle group and the Marine Amphibious Ready Group will all be spending the holidays. They're about two-thirds of the way through their six-month cruises now. During the next hour, we'll show you some of the emotion and some of the hard work that go into a sailor's Christmas in the Med. Right, Joe? Absolutely, John. Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm Joe Flanagan. Wait, wait, this came in. This just in, Santa Claus has arrived. He's here. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not count. And I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town He's making a list and checking it twice He's gonna find out who's naughty and nice Santa Claus is coming to town He sees you when you're sleeping And he knows when you're awake he knows when you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 you better watch out. You better not pop. You better not cry. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Oh, Merry Christmas! You know, every year, old St. Nick leaves the North Pole and travels all across the world to bring some goodies to all the boys and girls. Well, one of my favorite stops is always here in the Mediterranean to visit the boys of the U.S. Navy. They do a great job for us year in and year out to make this old world safe, and the least old Santa can do is bring them a little Christmas joy. Why, in my bag here, I might even find a toy for a Marine or two. Who knows? <laughs> Well, not too 
funny, old Santa Claus, but we're going to have a good time here. We've even brought some special gifts from the Wives Club and a videotape or two. It's going to be a great Christmas. Ho, 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 ho. See you later. Bitch, I like Yari. Stavi de fata do tadi doluri. E da così non voglio più campare. Italy is a festive country, especially during the Christmas season. Italians love to celebrate. They have songs to sing, ornaments to hang, and gifts to buy. But off their coast are some eight to 10,000 Norfolk-based sailors who are celebrating Christmas a little differently. For them, Christmas is another work week with long lines, long hours, long days, and long nights. It is a long, long way away from home. But the candle of Christmas finds a way to burn here, and the light of hope and the spirit of the season manages to shine. We'll show you that in places like Naples and Sicily, where a Marine and a merchant can exchange holiday cheers. We'll show you people like Petty Officer Wayne Corum of Norfolk, away from his wife and four children for the first time and missing them dearly. And we'll show you people like Master Chief Larry Crawford of Virginia Beach, 43 years a Navy man who says no matter how long you serve, you never get used to being away from home at Christmas. From the cities at sea like the USS Saipan and the Kennedy, to the smaller ships like the USS Sumter and the Yarnell, we'll try to bring them home for the holidays, at least for the moment, and try to share Christmas with our Hampton Roads neighbors on the front lines of peace on Earth. The overwhelming sense of life on a carrier is energy, in speed. The flight deck is a busy and dangerous place where life and death decisions are made by young people, like aircraft handler Theodore Walker. Pilot's life and so, so are my shipmates which work with me. Mm -hmm. the, the life depends on me. One of the people who depends on Theodore is Ken Crandall, who just a week ago became commanding officer of Fighter Squadron 32 based at Oceana. This is his fourth deployment. Each one has meant being away at Christmas, leaving his wife and three children at home in Virginia Beach. It's not fun. We decorate the ready room here, and uh, we uh, probably you know, have a bit nice dinner at the uh, ship here. And uh, you get lonely and probably write a letter. And, and uh, I know it's hard, but make a phone call. Decorating the ready rooms is a ritual for the air squadrons who spend Christmas on a carrier. It gives you a high, and, and it, but it gives you kind of a low, too, because you, you're decorating for yourselves, you're decorating for the spirit of the thing, but uh, on the other hand, you'd rather be home with your family decorating with them. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it builds your spirits, but then it also kind of lets your spirits down a little bit. No matter how fast the tempo is on a carrier, it just isn't fast enough to keep a sailor's mind in the med at Christmas. My thoughts are on home, my family, my wife, my kids. It's my first Christmas away from home. Now my thoughts are just back home with them. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy there are efforts, too, by the ship's commanders to break up the tedium. A caroling competition Christmas Eve, 
and on this day a demonstration of what this ship is all about, a bombing exercise by the carrier's A-6 and A-7 aircraft. And some razzle-dazzle in the sky by the F-14s. What the demonstration does is break up the loneliness in the 18-hour days on the flight deck and deep inside the carrier. Now, I haven't seen Joe Flanagan for a while. While we've been watching some of these 5,000 men hard at work, if I know Joe, he's found his way to some food. Hey, you think that Christmas turkey of yours was hard to prepare? Try cooking 5,000 meals three times a day, seven days a week. Now that's the job of the cooks here in the main galley. Talk about food. It takes 12 cooks to man the pans here in the main galley. And because the Kennedy is so large, there are 60 other cooks working four other dining areas around the ship, 12 hours on and 12 hours off. Now, why would someone want this kind of duty? I just love to cook. That's how come I become an MS. And it, just being around food makes me feel good. I was working breakfast, where we go through 8,000 eggs, 800 gallons of milk, and some 2,500 donuts. 14 to 1,500 sailors and Marines march through these lines each morning. And there's no time to mess up on the eggs. Flanagan? We have a leak. We've sprung a leak. Have you ever seen an omelet this big? You can make it at home. All it takes is... A little cheese on it. And then we're going to add a little ham on it. A little bit of bell peppers. How many can eat one of these omelets? Oh, okay, about... I could feed 10 out of this omelets I just laid down, about 10 people. Christmas Day, the Kennedy cooks will prepare 800 gallons of turkey rice soup, 1,600 pounds of grilled tenderloin steak, 2,400 pounds of roast turkey, 200 turkeys, 1,000 pounds of potatoes, 1,000 pounds of dressing, 700 pounds of broccoli, 800 pounds of corn, 100 pounds of cake, 500 pies, and 300 gallons or about 5,000 servings of eggnog, unspiked. A lot of food for a lot of people. Yeah, each day some 3,000 enlisted come to the line here in the main galley. Now, just down the hall from here, about 250 officers dine in the wardroom under the watchful eye of a man by the name of Wayne Corum. Wayne truly likes what he does. And just this month, he made petty officer, which really made him feel good. But this time of year, he'd feel a whole lot better if he were somewhere else. That somewhere else is here on Helmick Avenue in Norfolk, where his wife Cherie and their four children live. Laura's 10, Jennifer's 9, Sarah's 6, and little Cody just turned 3. The holidays just don't seem the same without Daddy Wayne around. Empty. More empty. It's sad. You know, because this time of year makes you think about family and everything, but it makes you feel empty and kind of lost. Everybody has the little pairs they go off on and in, and you're just here waiting. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Yes, the Corms are singing and decorating, <laughs> but their real Christmas will be in two months. Well, I. We did get him his Christmas present, but he doesn't want most of it until he gets home because we're having Christmas when he gets home in February. We're going to have a Christmas tree up and everything, and our lights, and it's going to be interesting because a lot of people are coming down for his homecoming. So it won't be too much like Christmas here until he gets home. Now leave it to Santa Claus to bring Wayne a video for Christmas for a first-hand look at his loved one's home in Norfolk. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as that is done, he'll be home. What is this, Cody? <coughs> Who's going to come see you pretty soon? 
Watching his family celebrating Christmas without him reminded Wayne just how much he missed them. It's hard on you. It's the first time me and my wife's been apart for any length of time, except, you know, for when I went through uh, boot camp and A school. And it's really hard, especially when family's kind of close. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be While the guys were opening the gift from the Wives Club, Santa made the rounds, and everyone seemed anxious to talk to him. Merry Christmas, Sam. What do you hope for Jimmy? My family. The gift was a banner that stretched from ceiling to floor and contained signatures and messages from home. I think it's fantastic, is what I think it is. See anybody? No, I don't recognize any names yet. I'm still going to look here for a little bit longer, and then I'll... I'll head out. Many a sailor searched for a familiar note, and many a sailor found one. Oh, I like that. That's, 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 that shows we ate lovers and missiles back home. That's real nice. You see your name? Yes, uh huh. I already seen it. What's her name? Sharon Walker, my wife. And lives in Norfolk, Virginia. What do you say to her? Merry Christmas, baby, and I love you. Be home soon. Huh? Yeah, my wife and children's on there. What'd you say to them? Uh, I said, Merry Christmas. Hi, I miss you, and I love you. Yeah, I found her. Tell us who it is and where she is and who's with her. Fran and Victoria Nelson. They live in Virginia Beach. Well, Merry Christmas, honey. I love you. Thank you. So Santa was doing his part, and it seemed to put people in the Christmas spirit. You know, nothing says Merry Christmas more to Hampton Roads sailors than a warm wish from you at home. This is the Fleet Post Office in Siganella, Sicily, where all the mail from you gets sorted and shipped to the sailors stationed anywhere in the Med. It comes in here by the truckloads and is dropped off in the postal warehouse. Hey, AGP. Two. Kennedy. No. Here the crew starts the long process of sorting bags according to ships and land-based locations. The mail is very important to us. Uh, there isn't a sailor out here with a sixth fleet or here at Naval Air Station Siganella that doesn't appreciate getting mail from home. And uh, we like to think that uh, somewhere in all these bags and bundles back here, there's something for everybody. Once the bags have been sorted, individual letters are tended to under the watchful eye of handlers who know their job is very important. It sure helps the morale around here to get the mail here and get the mail to the ships. The, the guys that come in here, they they thank us every time we see a guy off the ship. They thank us for the mail. It's, it's a nice feeling to know that you're helping, you know, the spirit of the sailors around. Now there's only one way that Christmas mail can get from the postal office south of the ships at sea, and that is by air. We were heading for the Kennedy with 6,000 pounds of holiday mail from Hampton Roads. That's a whole lot of love. And by the time our big bird was on the deck, the number one priority soon became the transfer of these orange bags to the elevator for a ride down below. 
And to think there was another six to 10,000 pounds of mail not far behind coming from Siganella. What we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna break down the uh, letter mail in these pitching cases here. And uh, we'll probably hold a mail call and when, the, when the bags get full here. And then uh, probably have to hold another mail call later on this evening. Mail call the best time on ship? Uh, it is for a lot of people, yes, sir. Um, next to um, chow time, probably the most important. <laughs> Here the mail is sorted into divisions to eventually find its way to the ship's various departments. Engineering, A75. This mail belongs to the America Remembers campaign. Each and every letter will be answered. Well, the campaign, uh, and, and I think everybody's pretty aware of, is uh, simply letters and cards uh, uh, back from the folks at home. Uh, these guys are over here in the Med. Uh, a lot of them are, are uh, away from family. They're married guys and away from their families. Uh, the younger ones not married are away from their, their parents and so on, uh, their sweethearts. Uh, these letters and this whole campaign is... Uh, is to try to make Christmas time away from home just a little bit less lonely than it would have been otherwise, and uh, it's working. Finally, our mail ends up in the right hands, and a sailor can take that precious time to sit down and read the latest from a loved one. In all, it's about a six-day journey from home to ship. Certainly letters say it all when it comes to families apart at Christmas time. You know, some families even send videotape messages. It's with a great deal of pleasure now that I introduce a special videotape message from the skipper of the USS John F. Kennedy, Captain Jack Moriarty. I would like to take and uh, express to, uh, of course, first of all, to all the families of uh, the uh, John F. Kennedy that, uh, that we want to uh, wish them a very Merry Christmas and uh, joyous New Year's season. Uh, we uh, will be home uh, quite soon, and uh, I want all the uh, people back home to know that we uh, very thoroughly feel and enjoy the support that they have given us throughout the cruise, but most especially the support that, uh, that they've shown during this Christmas season. Uh, you yourself have, uh, have seen the great volumes of mail and uh, gifts that have come from, uh, from uh, friends and loved ones back home, and uh, we appreciate that because that's uh, the kind of thing that makes this ship go and makes every ship go is the people that support us back home and uh, we're very very grateful to have them and uh, I just want to thank them all uh, from all on Kennedy and uh, be rest assured that we'll have a uh, lovely Christmas aboard this ship there'll be a tinge of disappointment because we can't be with uh, our family and loved ones but we'll be thinking of them and uh, we want to wish them all a Merry Christmas Wife is uh, Cindy Anderson and Matthew and Bradley, and I'd like to send my love to them. Hope they have a very wonderful holiday season. Just like to say hi anyway. And, uh, wish you could come over and, and be my roommate for the night, but I guess you can't. So, hi everybody. I don't, I don't know what else. To say. Hello to Ingrid Brigham. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas, and I love you very much. See you soon. From, From Attack Squadron 75. Merry Christmas. Yeah, hello Ginger. That's my dog. I'm in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, Hampton Roads from the Seahawks. Bomb to a of better go to the Kennedy. Merry Christmas, Hampton Roads from the Kennedy. Happy holiday, kids, mom and dad, and everybody. Just to say uh, happy holidays and uh, wishing I was there. And uh, saying hello to the Norview football team. <laughs> A call to general quarters on a guided missile cruiser, Harry E. Arnell. Each week, roughly, we go to general quarters to maintain a certain level of proficiency in firefighting and combating flooding and the like. Fred 2 reports, hot jam hats, one, uh, compartment 2 tag, 0 tag, 0 tag Lima. 
Well, all repair locker is uh, repair. We've had hit alpha. It's a loud underwater explosion. We we'll repair five, which means we respond to all damages that, that, that go for the main spaces, the main engineering spaces. General quarters, in this case saving the ship after a mock mine explosion, is a standard drill on Navy ships. It means man your battle stations. But not all aspects of life are the same from one Hayes Gray ship to another. Even though they may serve in the same battle group, the men aboard the smaller ships, the destroyers, the cruisers, and the frigates, find a different lifestyle than on the carrier itself with its 5,000 or so men. The smaller ships, affectionately known as tin cans, have smaller crews. The Arnell has less than a tenth of the sailors on a carrier. Well, I think the camaraderie is the main difference. It's a, it's a family. In cruiser destroyer force, you don't get lost in a shuffle. The contrast shows up in various ways. The chiefs are a closer community, for example. It seems, too, it's easier to throw a party for 400 than for 5,000, a fact of life appreciated by Alan Doc Rickenbach, the ship's corpsman who grew up in Phoebus. Since we've been on the med, we've, we've done some fun things. Uh, we've had cookouts on the fantail um, where we actually set up uh, makeshift grills, grilled hamburgers and hot dogs, and that was fun. We also have a ship's band that played at the cookouts, and that was during the quieter moments. Perhaps it was in one of those quieter moments that Petty Officer Walter Schibble, an electronics technician, created Mr. Wally, who took us on a holiday tour of the ship. This is ITC2 Johnson. He works down here. He's a very good neighbor. Would you like to say something to the people back home in Norfolk? Yes, I would, Mr. Wally. I'd like to say Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, especially my family and friends back home. I wish them all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and wish I could be back there with them. Gee, that was a nice Christmas message. Come on, let's go see some other people that work here in our neighborhood. Walter, like most of the men on the ship, is enlisted. Bridging the gap between the enlisted men and the commanding officer falls to Command Master Chief Bob Johnston, a 28-year Navy veteran. Our Navy's 211 years old. My shipmates on this ship can't have a problem that somebody else has not already had. So my job is to, once we identify what that problem is, is to help them find the solution and not reinvent the wheel. Bob rides home to Virginia Beach every day, but it's that phone call at Christmas that makes it really tough to be away. Uh, I have difficulty on the telephone. Uh, I'm not the old crusty master chief that most folks would want to believe. I, I cry a lot, honestly, on the telephone, because I do miss them. Uh, the hurt never goes away. It never gets any easier. Captain Tom McNicholas, the commanding officer of the Arnell, sends this holiday message home on behalf of his crew. First of all, we're very pleased, uh, and that may sound funny, but I think as a whole, the crew is very pleased to have the opportunity to be over here doing, doing our thing. Uh, somebody has to be here, and we're kind of proud of the fact that we happen to be here this, this year. Uh, uh, service people all over the world uh, defending our way of life. Uh, one of the messages of Christmas is uh, peace on earth, goodwill toward men, and I think that uh, I think that our Navy does a good job of that, and that's what we're here for. So uh, we've got a proud crew, and we're glad to be here and have the opportunity to serve. And uh, next year this time, we'll be home, and we'll appreciate home all the more. Christmas for Americans stationed in places like Sicily is quite an experience. We found that out when we attended this Christmas bazaar in Catania with a group of transplanted Hampton Roads residents. Sicilian fondue. There was food to eat, prepared by an Italian butcher, complete with a whole array of sausages and interesting little cheeses. There were gifts to buy, like this chair, purchased by Clarence and Edna Harris of Kempsville for their little son. And there were ornaments and toys that caught the eye of all of us, especially little Patrick Moroni of Norfolk, who dreamed of Christmas morning. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost. We even spotted an Italian version of Farm Fresh's Susan Mayo. She was busy frying up a batch of tasty little waffles that everybody ate. No, it's in between a cookie and a cracker and a Cheeto. <laughs> well, we have our own traditions that we keep, our American traditions. In Italy, they also have Christmas trees, 
and lights and home celebrations and they dwell on the religious also. They have beautiful uh, precipios, which are nativity scenes set up in the churches. In the evenings, they have fireworks. They have fireworks for any occasion here. And uh, the churches, the, the towns, they try to compete with each other on the volcano. And on a clear night from the base, you can look up and see fireworks displays going off around the side of the volcano. It's really impressive. Mark Bazell is a 74 Kellum High grad. He found an Italian bargain in a German language. She asked me a question I didn't quite understand. I said, Ja. She said, Sprechen Sie Deutsch? I said, Ja, ich spreche nur ein bisschen Deutsch. You know, so she had lived in Germany for 10 years, and my father was stationed in Germany for three years when I was living with him, so I know a little German, so we were able to communicate that way. It worked out really well. <laughs> and what'd you buy? Uh, and an Angora sweater for my wife back home. I'll take it to her and we'll have Christmas in January when I get home. Hold up and show them. Kids from one Tell them what's coming on. Yeah, really, this is it. That gray Angora sweater. It was a good price. It really was. I think probably one thing that's very different between Italy and the States is that Christmas starts later here. It doesn't start the weekend or two weeks before Thanksgiving, it starts two weeks before Christmas. So you can't really find Christmas supplies un until just a few weeks before Christmas. There's plenty to shop for here, but some things just can't be replaced. We had to have a fake tree. I, we're used to having a real tree all the time. The majority of the time, you know, like saying, hey, <laughs> I like that smell of a real Christmas tree. And now you got the smell of a fake one sitting around there. I, fireplaces, and, yeah. uh, <laughs> even looking at Charlie Brown Christmas, things like that. <laughs> we don't get to do that now. <laughs> so you've gotten a glimpse of Christmas shopping here at the Catania Christmas Bazaar. Now John Westling will take us Christmas shopping with the Marine in beautiful downtown Naples. Naples has been a haven for seafarers for centuries, so it's the logical place to headquarter support activities for the U.S. 6th Fleet. Marine Lance Corporal Reeve Swainston is one of several thousand support people in Naples. Reeve has picked up enough Italian to enjoy the town, in between providing security for the American facilities here. On this morning, Reeve was touring Christmas Alley with some friends. Christmas Alley is a place where you can buy just about any Christmas item you want, year-round. Reeve was looking for something Italian for his mother. Easy, you say? Believe it or not, if you go around here in Naples, you'll find a lot of things American, believe it or not. And uh, I was basically just out looking for something all Italian, 100% Italian, so that I could send it to her. It's hard to walk through Naples without stopping to visit some of the hundreds of churches, many of which are hundreds of years old. Reeves' British friend says one of the tricks to getting around is to learn okay, Italian time. time. If someone says to you, we'll meet you at half past 11, you usually double the time, half past 12. <laughs> it's usually think of a time and double it with the Italians. But a visitor also learns that the Italians are a friendly and enthusiastic people. And they also make a heck of a pizza. Of course, being a Marine in Naples means work, like pulling guard duty at this Christmas show put on by an international grade school. Christmas in Italy is a colorful and festive time. 
but it's not the same as being home for Christmas. There's no place like home, there really isn't. All I have is my mother and my brother back in Philadelphia, and it's all I have in the world. And I'm gonna be working the Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and I just work Thanksgiving Day. And, and it, sometimes it even hurts, it really does. But it's my duty, and I'm proud to do it. Of course, the men who spend the holidays here in the Med depend on support from home. And home is where many sailors' hearts are at this time of year. Joe tells us about one such family separation. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Come on, Timmy, wake up. Wake up. Yeah. Yeah, come see your father. Say hello to Dad. Here's Big Brother. Yeah, we had trouble finding clothes this year because he's so little. So this is his little Christmas outfit. Linda Rowland is new to all this. Married just three and a half years, this is her first Christmas alone. It's also her first Christmas in her new Virginia Beach home, and her first Christmas with her two-week-old baby, a son husband John Rowland has yet to see. Well, Miss, putting up the Christmas decorations together, the planning, uh, taking Mike to see Santa Claus for the first time, because the past years he scared the death of him. Uh, the normal traditions that we started the first three years of marriage. Uh, just the being together. December 3rd, 1986. Dearest John, hope all is well with you. We are all fine. I'm beginning to feel stronger since the birth. Gee, can't believe it's so close to Christmas. Not sure if I'll be ready, but we'll ha still have a Christmas. Timmy had his first trip to Richmond. Dad's new house is so nice. They have decorated lovely as usual. Timmy was a great little traveler. He cried some in the beginning, but then slept the rest of the way. He seems to be such a calm and sweet baby. He rolls with Mike's punches and seems to understand that's the way it's supposed to be. Mike goes back to school tomorrow. They were off last week for Thanksgiving. Oh, the gals at his school have been great to us. Liz from the Catholic group offered to take him tomorrow, but we can take him. Well, better get. I love you very much. Things are fine here. Take care. We'll write more later. Love, Linda. Linda's husband works as a jet mechanic supervisor and is on his first six-month Kennedy deployment. Now Santa knew the one thing to bring John this Christmas was a chance to see and hear his family, and he did just that. Where's Kennedy? Kennedy. Is he on the water? Water. What's he work on? Playing. What do thanks do? Yeah. Give her. Give Daddy a big one. Wait, Daddy. Uh, Say bye, Dad. Bye, Dad. Give him a salute. Bye. Give him a salute. Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Santa knew he'd done the right thing. Mike, I love you, and uh, uh, I'm sending your Christ little Christmas present. Uh, and uh, take care of your little brother and your mom. We'll see you in February. And uh, I'll be calling on the phone pretty soon again, before Christmas, hopefully. And uh, we'll see you in February. I'm going to eat your brownies. See the brownies? I'm going to eat these brownies here. All these brownies, I'm going to eat them all up. You're not going to have any, but I get them all. But we'll be home in February, okay? Greeting cards have all been sent. The Christmas rushes through But I still have one wish to make A special one for you Merry Christmas, darling We're apart, that's true But I can dream I'm Christmasing with you. Well, there are times at night that you walk around your bedroom saying, okay, dear, I miss you. I wish you were here, but it's been a bad day and I can't take it. But everybody else just say, oh, I'm fine. I'm doing well, you know. There are times, but yeah, it's you realizing down deep that you miss him very much. Like, 
you miss him very much, but you realize it's his job, and you you know you take it that way, and you want he, you want him to know that you're able to handle it, so it makes him feel good. Santa Claus went down Santa Claus Lane. Fixing the bricks and the all his reindeers pulling on the reins. Bells are ringing, children singing, all is merry and bright. So hang your stockings and say your prayers, cause Santa Claus comes tonight. By the time Santa Claus made it board the Kennedy, you would have thought Bob Hope had arrived. These guys were fired up and ready for a little holiday cheer from back home. Okay, uh, A V P. Wonderful or what? What is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's. Oh. That's probably the only guy that hit can beat in air combat. Well, this is. <laughs> gifts that tried to be optimistic and gifts that got right to the point. I already had my boxers, so... It's not what you call a subtle hint, but... These two aviators seemed to mix and match as they went along. Yes, a good time was had by all as the big man in the red suit, or was it the big man in the green suit, spread the message of Christmas to all. Merry Christmas. I feel like Karnak. Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. Bits and bits and all his reindeers pulling on the rain. Bells are ringing, children singing, all is merry and bright. Hang your stockings and sing your prayers, cause Santa Claus comes tonight. Merry Christmas, Hampton Rose. All right. All right. All right. All right. The Kennedy Wives Club Christmas party wasn't really for the wives and families as much as it was for the sailors 5,000 miles away. The families got together by department and put a quick Christmas greeting on videotape. It would become the top rated show on the Kennedy closed circuit TV system. Of course, no Christmas party would be complete without a visitor from the north. One of the first to sit on Santa's lap was seven-year-old Tony Griffin, who asked if Santa could help bring Daddy home. No, but he could help explain why Daddy was away. Would I have, would my North Pole still be standing? No, because somebody... Tony's father, Tony Sr., was among the Kennedy sailors to see a three-second glimpse of the family. Hearing from the family is one way the cruise passes more quickly. We have, we send tapes, we send um, audio tapes to each other, and uh, I think that's what's uh, 
making us get me through here in the help of Jesus. Mass specialist Tim Morgan has only been married a short time. So without kids, his wife Ann helped out at the party. He and the other sailors left no doubt how the message hits them. Right in the middle of your heart, it just hits home base. Uh, seeing your wife, even if it is just for that split second or two, three minutes, it's just to see her smile and know that she's thinking about you back there, it's, it's a good feeling. I, I kind of like to see her, you know, I know she's really there and um, everything's okay. I see a smile on her face, it just makes me feel good and uh, makes, me, makes me happy. The greetings go by so fast that a sailor has to have quick eyes to pick out his family, but he always can, even though the younger members of the family may not look quite the same as they did four months ago. Rick Kearns knows they won't be the same when he gets back. Like when I left, my son Matthew wasn't reading yet, and at the time I get back, my wife said he's, all, he's reading. So, you know, instead of Dad reading the book to him, he's going to bring the book to me and say, Daddy, let me read you this book. Andy Anderson is missing his family, too, but he and his roommate have done their best to bring Christmas to the carrier, decorating their stateroom while their minds wander home. My thoughts are uh, definitely not here in the med. They're at home with a wife and kids right now and uh, all the people in the Tidewater area. Andy, like most sailors we talk to, has a clear sense of why we should all care about the servicemen and women who make the sacrifice. This isn't the best time of year to be away from home, but uh, we really love America and all the people in the Tidewater area. And, uh, we think it's worth it, what we're doing out here. And we can't wait to be home. Merry Christmas from Mary e. All right, I'd like to wish my wife, my daughter, my mother and father, and my in-laws all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And God bless you. Denise, Dwayne, Nicole, Mom, Dad, everybody, Merry Christmas. We'll see you soon. From the USS Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas to my wife and the kids, Mary, Paul, Shannon, Angie, and Aaron. A Merry Christmas to my wife, Lori, and my three boys, Chris, Daniel, and James. And Merry Christmas to my mother and father who live in Virginia Beach, and my sister who lives out in Chesapeake, and another brother who lives in Virginia Beach. I'd like to throw it in to my brother and his family in Atlanta, too, so they don't feel left out. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say Merry Christmas to my mother and dad. And I hope they have a nice Christmas. Murray at the best there. Uh, to my brothers and sisters, uh, all of them, it's nine of us. This exercise room might be on any ship in the U.S. Navy, but because it's on the USS Saipan, most of the men who work out here are Marines. They're members of the Mobile Amphibious Ready Group, and they, like the Kennedy Battle Group, are spending Christmas in the Med. The ships in the group, the Saipan, the Raleigh, and the Sumter, are operated by Norfolk-based sailors. Their purpose is to get the Marines in a position to hit a beach if the need should ever arise. The Saipan is home to Larry Crawford, one of the oldest master chiefs in the U.S. Navy. At age 62, he's a 43-year Navy veteran who doesn't mind being called a salty old sea dog. Uh, I feel at home uh, on the ship, uh, wherever it goes. It, I... Master Chief Crawford has not only chosen to stay in the Navy, he's chosen sea duty over a shore position. I find that the family relationships uh, between the families are, are much closer between shipboard personnel than people on shore commands. Uh, shore commands, you may only know the, uh, uh, the person works at the next, next desk. Here on the ship, the next desk might well belong to a Marine. Having the Marines embark has some impact on shipboard life. The weight room is busier, and so is the mess hall. George Bussey, who runs the hall, says the few in the proud can do the job with the knife and the fork. I see them. We feed probably about 1,000 a day, not counting the crew. So we average the feeding right around 2,000 people per meal. But yeah, they definitely eat a lot more than the Marines do. A lot more. A whole lot more. Between meals and workouts, the Marines do a lot of amphibious exercises, going to beachheads by helicopter or by landing craft, which are based at Little Creek. Among the Marines who will spend Christmas on the ship is Gunnery Sergeant Joseph Alston. 
He's part of the high-tech Marine Corps, spending much of his time in front of a computer terminal. Even though at this time of year, his thoughts often go home to Newport News. Well, this is the first um, ho season holidays I'm away from my family, but um, this is harder to some people. I listen to them talk and how they react as far as being away from their family, and it's very hard to some of them. It seems being away for the holidays is something you never quite get used to. But Robert Gwynn of Norfolk, just like his buddies, has managed to cope. I've done it before. It's like the third one I'm missing. So you get close to the people you're around, you work with, you get a friendship with them to make the best of Christmas you got. And so our hour comes to a close, and we leave behind the pizza, the shopping, the crowded streets, and the Italians' wonderful passion for life. At the same time, Joe, we leave behind several thousand Norfolk-based sailors who'd rather be spending the Christmas home with you, but instead they're here in the Med. You don't come here for a week and not go home untouched by the men and by the emotion of holiday separation. Every chance that the sailors had to stand in front of the camera and look the camera in the eye and imagine it was their mother, their sweetheart, or their children, you could see the tears well up in their eyes, and we were getting goosebumps. At one point, we even had to turn the camera off. When Wayne Coram was uh, so moved by hearing from his family on the videotape that we just had to take a break from all of it because it, it's a, a very emotional and very moving experience to be here and see what these people go through. At the same time that you sense that emotion, Joe, you sense their dedication, how hard they work and their sense of purpose for being here. We had a chance to watch flight operations on the Kennedy from the flight deck. And it's dangerous on the flight deck. It's hot on the flight deck. It's cold on the flight deck. But there is a true sense of purpose here. I think it was probably best summed up by Captain Tom McNicholas of the guided missile cruiser Yarnell, who said that their, their sense of being out here was peace on earth and goodwill toward men. And that's what the holidays are about, and that's what their six months here in the Med mean. Absolutely. And we leave you Christmas 1986 with a special homecoming prepared by photographer Brian Barbie. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. everybody. A Navy Christmas has been sponsored by Newport News Shipbuilding and Taco Bell. We of Newport News Shipbuilding join with all the people of the Hampton Roads area in sending our thanks to all Naval personnel and their families, and especially to those who are deployed this holiday season, protecting the peace and freedom we all enjoy. May you all have a safe and happy holiday. 
and may 1987 be a wonderful year for each of you. We hope this program has helped make your Christmas a little brighter. And on behalf of everyone at Taco Bell, we are pleased to have shared a Navy Christmas with you. We're grateful to the men and women of the United States Navy and their families, and we extend our warmest wishes to all of you for a joyous holiday season. Transportation provided by TWA, now serving over 90 cities throughout the world, including Europe, the Middle East, Africa, the Bahamas, Puerto Rico, and the United States, including Alaska and Hawaii. Today's TWA, find out how good we really are. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Next year all our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself. Thank <laughs> you.